Hey, it's Nick here from Grayscale Gorilla, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Mo Extrude effect to create this fun animation in Cinema 4D and Redshift. And if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, be sure to watch to the end of the video where I show you how to turn this animation into a perfect looping animation using Signal. All right, with that, let's head on into Cinema 4D and let's get started. All right, here we are in Cinema 4D and let's get started with this Mo Extrude trick. Now we have some basic lighting and cameras and stuff set up. If you wanna know how to set this up, we have other tutorials to show you. Today we'll be focused mostly on this Mo Extrude trick. So let's go. Let's grab a cube and let's shrink this thing way down. Let's go to 20 by 20 by 20. And this will be our start cube. And we want to just add a Mo Extrude. So where do you find it? Hit Shift C and start to type MO and you should see it in this list. And uh, you could either double click it or hit enter with it selected. I'm gonna double click Mo Extrude. Let's just add it right to our cube. So what does Mo Extrude do? Well, it extrudes um, geometry in a Mo graphy way. So we have a lot of fun controls here. First of all, it extrudes every polygon. So if you add more polygons to your cube, you're gonna see more extrudes. If we click on the Mo Extrude, and we go to the transform tab. This is where you can control how much it extrudes. There's also different steps. So you could say how many times do you want to extrude it? And this is fun if you wanna add something like rotation and get little um, uh, curly cues and fun stuff like that, okay? Uh, we're, well, that's cool. Uh, we're not doing that today. <laughs> Maybe another time, that's fun. Definitely play with that. Uh, we're actually going to uh, use one extrusion step and we're going to move it something like five centimeters. Let's talk quickly about the scale as well. You can see these polygons are being scaled down as we as they're being extruded. And you can control that in every direction here, and that means you can make these cute little uh, you know tendrils if you use multiple uh, steps. But today we're just going to go all the way back to the beginning and simplify this and say one uh, segment in our cube and we're going to extrude five centimeters. And let's just make this 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. Okay, so nothing crazy so far. I am gonna go into my Fong tag and turn it down so we could see our bevels a little bit more. Um, and what do we do from here? Well, what's really cool about Mo Extrude and all of these effectors actually is you could just layer them and get wild effects. So let's go ahead and grab our Mo Extrude. Hold down control, drag it down until you see the arrow right below it. When you let go, it is now duplicating that Mo Extrude and now extruding all of these new polygons again. So we do have to turn it down a little bit. Let's go to our transform tab and lower this down so we don't have this intersection. We don't want them to touch, no touching. So uh, you can do this again. Uh, you start to run into ways that things start touching, uh, but let's just go ahead and do this one more time. And you can see, uh, other than things starting to touch, you could go really crazy with this and get a lot of different uh, effects going. So we could turn this one down. We can also shrink this second one a little bit smaller. So let's try 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. This will keep it from touching on that third layer. And this is a cool pattern. And I encourage you to mess around with all of these settings and um, to, to uh, play with Mo Extrude because it's very powerful. We're gonna keep it simple today so we can learn some basics. All right, so now that we have this, we're missing all of these nice rounded edges. Now, how do we get rounded edges on uh, all these new, all this new geometry? Well, there's a bevel effector that we can add into the layering here. Really powerful stuff. It allows us to not make this cube editable um, and, and even swap the cube down the road with any other object and all of this stuff just works. So let's add a bevel. Hit Shift C, bevel. Now I use Shift C for just about everything because things constantly change in Cinema 4D. They move things around in different menus. And as long as you know what things are called, the Shift C search is just uh, the best place to go because it's all here. Let's grab a bevel, let's drag it into the cube, and it's beveling. Now, we do have to adjust this. Uh, we don't want it to, uh, you can do a fixed distance, and you would just have to turn this way down. Um, but you can also use proportional, and this gives us a little bit more control and, 
and uh, I just like using proportional with this type of uh, workflow. We do have to turn up the subdivision. You can see we have a bevel, but it's just one uh, bevel. And if we wanna round it out even more, we could turn this up. Now beware, uh, this effect right here, this bevel, adds the most calculation. So if as we start to animate this, if things are slow, just go over and turn off your bevel and animate without it, and then turn it on for the final render because you get all this nice lighting. Little bevels on everything, always catch light better, always is uh, a better look. If, if things are looking too sharp and too 3D, throw a bevel on it, right? All right, uh, now that we got this going, let's add a material. Uh, you can make a basic material, drag it on here, start to adjust the reflection. I'm gonna use one of my favorites, which is the uh, plastic, the orange plastic, of course, orange plastic. So I'm just gonna type in orange plastic into Grayscale Gorilla Plus, and I'm gonna use orange plastic scratched, and you could just drag it right on the cube. And again, if you don't have plus, go in here and create a redshift material standard and uh, mess around with the colors in there, and you'll start to, uh, and then just drag it onto the object. Okay, so now we got our, our object here. I'm gonna close my materials. What else can we do? Well, how do we start to animate this thing? Well, uh, let's go ahead. I'm gonna turn up our lighting a little bit. Um, let's go ahead and set that up. So what we really wanna do is turn off this uh, Mo Extrude and animate it. Um, now there's a few different ways to do it, but for the most control, I like to set up a plane effector for every Mo Extrude in my uh, setup. So really quickly, let's set that up. I'm gonna grab the first Mo Extrude, and let's call this one Mo Extrude Zero, just so we have a, a name for all these. You'll see why in a second. With the Mo Extrude selected, let's hit Shift C, type Plane, P-L-A-I-N, hit Enter. We now have a plane effector that's attached to this Mo Extrude, and uh, if we go into parameter, we we don't want it to go in this Y direction, although that's kind of fun. <laughs> more, more wacky stuff to go play with. Uh, well, let's just zero this out. We, instead, we wanna use Z. Z is going to subtract. If we subtract the same number we extruded, then it will go back to zero. So here's transform five centimeters. In our plane effector, go to parameter and set this to negative five centimeters. And if we turn off our other Mo extrudes, you can see we go back all the way to a regular cube. And so this is pretty powerful. Um, we do have to set one of these up for each of our Mo extrudes. So let's go ahead and do that. For this, let's just duplicate our plane. I'm gonna say Control C, Control V, Control C, Control V, or Command C, well, you know, copy paste, whatever it is on your machine, do that. Now I have three of them. I'm gonna reorder them just so they're in the same order as my Mo extrudes. And we, we're gonna set the numbers the same. So in Mo extrude one, transform is two. So plane one, we're gonna do negative two. Mo extrude two is two. We could probably use the same one, but uh, that's okay. We could set this up real quick. Negative two. And now, why didn't it affect it the same way as the first one? Well, remember the first plane effector we made, uh, it was, we made it with this Mo extrude selected, which meant in the effectors tab, the plane effector automatically got connected to this Mo extrude. Well, you can see the other Mo extrudes don't have any effectors in them. So we just have to drag them in. Mo extrude two needs plane two, and Mo extrude one needs plane one. And if we did it all correctly, it goes all the way back to uh, a, a just a plain old cube. And this is pretty cool, but we could even do something even cooler than a plain cube, which is we could do things like uh, subtract even more from the effect to go negative, to go into the object. So check that out. That's pretty cool. And this this can you could be pretty subtle with this, like negative 2.1. Okay, now we got little weird bevels here. We could do this to all of our plane effectors. So I'm gonna do a little bit more with this main one. Let's do negative six. Uh, this one doesn't affect it as much because there's not as much geometry. Let's try this one. Oh yeah. And then I'm gonna go even further with this one. Cool. Cool effect. All right. So now, uh, what what can we do now that we have these plane effectors? Well, how do we animate it 
uh, from going from this to the to the extruded version where everything's popped out and sticking out. Um, well, you could animate this, but Fields is built for this. So we're going to add a linear field to control all of this stuff. Now, we're using Mo Extrude, but if you're new to Fields and new to all this Mo Graph stuff, this works across the board. It works for everything. It works with clones. It works with dynamics. So once you learn Fields, it's going to be so powerful as you uh, play more with Mo Graph tools here in Cinema 4D. So how do you set it up? Well, let's just do it in our first plane effector. Let's go to Fields. And right here, you're going to see a linear field. If you don't see it, just click and hold, and you'll get a list. And go ahead and just grab a linear field, boink. You can make the boink noise or not. It should still work either way. Okay, now that you have the linear field, you have to add that linear field to all three plane effectors. This is real simple. Just go to the plane effector, go to fields, drag in the same linear field. Let's go to plane two and drag in the same linear field. Okay, we're almost ready, folks. Now let's select our linear field. By default, it becomes a child of the effector, but you can move it out. Um, you know, organize your hierarchy how you want. I'm gonna move it out for now. I'm gonna go to my linear field. I'm gonna go to the field and take this length slider and slide it way down. Something like 13 sounds fine. And check out what we have now. If we move this linear field through our object, we are now animating from all the way extruded to all the way unextruded. And if we set these back to the, the other numbers, this will just go back to the plain old cube. But I, I kind of like this look. It's a little bit more unique. Um, but play around with this. Now you have control. And it's not just linear effectors. If you're more familiar with uh, fields and you've been playing around with it, you know that there's tons more fields. There's random fields and all of these shapes you could control and all, of, all the delays and stuff. Anything you could do with fields, you can now do with this Mo Extrude effect, okay? Uh, so for this animation, let's just keep it simple and let's just animate it going from this to this and then maybe back, okay? So I'm gonna go to our side camera here just so we can align things. And I wanna go all the way until nothing moves. There we go, no touching, perfect, boom. Let's call it that. Uh, now, you can set a keyframe here by cl clicking this button. Um, and then you can go forward in your timeline, move it over until it's all the way extruded, and then uh, just click the keyframe button again. Uh, if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can use Signal. Now, we made this plugin to animate this kind of stuff, make things loopable super easy. Um, so let's go back to the start. And let's go ahead and animate this X position right there. So let's make sure we're all the way back at the beginning. There it is. And all we need to do is drag this X parameter. In fact, Signal works with any parameter uh, into Drop Zone. Now, if you don't have Drop Zone uh, installed and you're a Plus member, make sure you go watch our Drop Zone video. It's super powerful. All you do is drag any parameter into it and you have a signal tag and you are ready to animate. Here, all we have to do is uh, go ahead and swap our min max so it starts where we, where we started it. And our max uh, parameter is gonna go all the way up to here. And all you have to do is just drag this, just like uh, just to find the end of the animation right where this stops moving. And now we have a full animation that goes from start to finish. Now, if you're using Signal, just click on Set Linear, and you will automatically get a 90 frame animation from the beginning of the animation all the way to the end. Now, we do have to uh, adjust this a little bit. First of all, I don't want it to take 90 frames. I want it to go faster, so let's say 60 frames. And I don't want it to be so linear that it's just moving like this. I want it to have a lot more fun and animation. So. We have all these preset curves we could use. Um, I'm going to use uh, sine in and out. This is just gonna start a little bit slower and then go a little bit faster in the middle. And I also don't want it to end there. I want it to go all the way back. So I'm gonna go to playback and go to ping pong. What this does is as soon as it does the animation, 
it's going to reverse back to where it was and it'll do it for infinity. And this is why Signal's great if you're trying to do any looping style effects. You can see now it's just going back and forth. Okay, so this is kind of fun, but what if you want to have even more randomness, but still keep the looping ability? Well, this is where you can add a null and put your linear field in the null. So I'm gonna start this with at zero, and the null comes in right in the center of the scene here, right in the center of my cube, and I'm going to make the linear field a child of the null. Now, once I do that, I can now rotate this null, and depending on where I rotate the null, the effect will change. Now the effect is coming from the upper left, going down, and then it's animating all the way back. This is why it's super powerful if you're using Signal, because it's really modular if you wanna change your mind down the road. You're not built into any keyframes. You can just adjust this stuff really quickly. And in fact, we're gonna use Signal one more time to add some noise uh, to this, um, uh, null so that the position of the animation moves over time. So all we have to do is go into the null, go to coordinates and select our rotation. And as you drag it in the drop zone, hold down shift, and this will bring all three parameters into signal. So now we have three rotation parameters. And instead of using this in the base tab, we're going to make a new tab called noise. So just click here and add modifiers, click noise, and we want loopable noise. This is built for loopable noise. I'm gonna turn up our variation. I'm gonna turn down our speed. Don't need it to move a lot, but I do need to tell it when to loop. So right now our scene is 320 frames. Uh, however, this open and close animation, if you remember back to the first linear, uh, a linear field animation, we have 60 frames up and 60 frames down so let's say we either want to loop at 120 frames or double that, which would be 240. So let's go ahead and make it 240. I'm going to type this in right here. This is going to make our entire timeline 240, okay? So what does this mean? Well, now in our rotation um, noise, we could tell our loop point to be 240. And now you could see, I'm going to turn off that bevel. You can see how much faster it goes without the bevel. Now you can see it's animating in different ways. And I'm gonna uh, make this even more because it's it's really not moving as much as I want. There we go, whoop, open. And it's closing from the top. And then it should loop. Look, it just looped around. This is what I wanted. Okay, let's add one more uh, loopable noise animation and, we sh and then we'll turn on our uh, bevel and we'll check our lighting and see if we are ready to render this thing. Okay, so let's do the same thing with our camera. So rather than our camera just sit here and do nothing and be static, if that's what you want, that's fine. But for this effect, I want my camera to also drift around, add a little motion. That'll help the lights bounce around. It'll help see new parts of the animation and some different reflections. Uh, and it's real simple to do. It's essentially the same exact thing we did for this animation, but for the camera. So let's go ahead and gr grab a new null. I'm gonna drag it down where our cameras are. If you don't have a camera, by the way, and you're following along, I know I set this up before, go to Redshift and go to your cameras and click on standard camera. Um, you, if you're not using Redshift, you could use any camera for this effect, but if you're following along in Redshift, that's where you'll find it. All right, now that we have a null, we drag our camera under the null and we do the exact same thing. We go into our null, go to coordinates and drag in rotation into drop zone. I'm gonna hold down shift as I do it. And it's going to make a little signal tag there. When I let go, it's gonna automatically make a signal tag on our null. And now we have all the control of signal right away. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna to go to noise. We're gonna add just a little bit of variation and we're going to select our loop point at 240. That, that way our noise will loop back around. We'll have a seamless loop at 240. And then we could adjust our speed as we go. So let's see what this looks like. That is a little too much. <laughs> uh, you could crank this up. If you really wanna make people sick, I mean, you could do this. Uh, but if you wanna slow it down, just go to speed, do something like 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16,
And what's great is it doesn't matter how fast or slow, it always loops. And that's what's really cool about this tab here. Um, I don't want it to move that much. I want it to be a little bit subtle. This looks good. And if you want it with a little bit more energy, there's, there's this bias contrast knob. And this just adds a little bit more, it's like twitchiness. It really makes it more of an extreme move. Let's go ahead and kick our IPR back on and let's start to check out what this looks like before we get ready for render. Now we don't have our bevel turned on, so let's go ahead and do that. Lovely. And right now we only have two lights. We essentially have our HDRI. Uh, this is from a Redshift dome light and we're using HDRI link to be able to swap our HDRIs really quick. We have other videos about HDRI link. If you're a plus member, go check that out. But essentially we have two different lights. We have this uh, as our kind of key light off to the side. Then we have this fill light uh, by using another Redshift dome light. And if we go into our details, you can see it's adding a little bit of reflection and diffuse um, right from the background color. So if you only want the background color, you could turn this off, but if you ever wanna fill that looks like your background color, you could just always dial this up in your details tab. Uh, same with reflection, it'll just add a little bit of, of the color in your reflections. So you can dial this up and down to taste, but we're really just missing a light off to the side here. It's just too dark over here. So let's just go ahead and grab a fresh redshift light. I wasn't planning on doing this, but hate to leave you guys with a render that's not ready to go. Um, let's go to redshift, uh, this area light that popped up. And I'm gonna use our rotate tools to spin this around. And uh, let's go ahead and flip it around one more time. So this way, and we just wanna move this down. And uh, before we move it over, I'm actually gonna put it in a null. So I, you can see I use this null trick a lot, especially with lights. I'll just put an area light in a null, and now we have all this control over where it goes just by rotating a null around. I do have to darken this light, it's way too bright, but I am getting the effect I want. I just want this kind of rim light to make a little bit of brightness over here. Still might be a little too bright. I just need a little bit. And then we could grab this null and rotate it around. Maybe we want it a little bit more off to the side. And there we go. Maybe turn it up a little bit. Okay, lovely. All right, so let's check both of the animations. Here's this one. It's a little dark here, but I don't mind that. Maybe we just add a little bit of fill from our uh, dome light here. And we could do this right in the exposure or in the details like we did before. And that looks fine. So here's, let's just scrub through and see what we got. Oh yeah, bwonk. You can make sound effects, feel free. Gotta make some sound effects. And this is looking pretty cool. Uh, let's check our beginning and end frame. Whenever you're doing a looping animation, make sure you always go to frame zero and then go to your absolute last frame and make sure those are the same. And it looks like they are. Boom, the signal's doing its job. And let's just make sure this is centered. And let's go to its largest point and make sure that's roughly centered. There we go and scrub through. We're just in the final little pieces where we're making sure before we kick off a render. Now, what's really great uh, with this whole setup is you can replace this cube with whatever object you want. Now, to be clear, if there's a ton of geometry, it's gonna slow your machine way down, especially with this bevel. But if you wanna try a different primitive or if you're a Grayscale Gorilla Plus member, you can pull in one of these doodads and maybe even use something like a, um, a polygon reduction to just get some different shapes out of this. So that's uh, some homework for you if you wanna experiment a little bit more with this effect. But I think for now, uh, we're looking good. So let's just double check our render settings. We're in output 1280 by 1280. I'm rendering 30 frames per second. I'm rendering all my frames. Make sure that is selected. In my Redshift um, settings, uh, make sure you select the proper proper bucket quality. If you're just using the basic uh, settings, which are really great, by the way, uh, I usually start with medium 
if I'm doing my fir absolute first animation, I either literally do a low or medium just to check timing, just to check animation. And if it looks the way I want, I'll start to crank this up to remove grain over time. But medium should be plenty fine for this setup. Hey, one final tip, if you made it this far, I'm gonna change the background. I forgot to do this before I hit render. And I have two dome lights. We talked a little bit about it earlier. This main one is doing the reflections, the lighting. And the second one is just like a fill light and filling in the background. But um, I didn't change the, the color. So how do we do that? Well, with the dome light selected, go into object, hit your color picker. And this is a little cheat that I learned from Chad Ashley that has really helped me pick better background colors. So you click the uh, uh, little eyedropper here and just select one of the colors from your scene, one of the more prominent colors from your scene. And you can see it instantly made the background one of these orange colors. And uh, this is the start of the process. That is not the end. You wanna go in and open this uh, color picker and just start to move it either a little bit brighter than the original orange or a little bit darker, depending on the mood you're going for. Um, so I usually check both. Here's a, a darker one. We can make this a little bit less saturated. A little bit goes a long way with this. Uh, I prefer it a little bit brighter. I'm getting this kind of tan background that uh, I think goes a lot better with this orange color than um, the gray where we left it before. So let me just move that, dial it in. It's so subtle. Okay, that's looking pretty good. One last final tip there for you guys as you play around with this. And one more encouragement to play around with these uh, Mo extrudes and other, um, other effectors. There's all of these effectors that layer and do different things. Definitely play with them because they're really fun here in Cinema 4D. Thanks again for watching everybody. And if you made it this far, don't forget to hit subscribe and even hit that bell thing because it'll let you know when we have more tutorials out just like this. All right, with that, I wanted to thank you one more time for watching and we will see you in another video really soon. Bye everybody.